The thing about Europe when it comes to premium cars is we know what we like and we like what we know. And what we know is German stuff. For almost as long as there have been motor cars, Mercedes, BMW, Audi, and more recently Porsche have dominated the premium family car space, leaving little more than scraps for the Alfa Romeos, Jaguars, and Lexi to fight over. It's a tough space to get into, but not impossible if your product is interesting enough. Just ask old musky boy. And actually, if there was a perfect moment to go on the attack and challenge the dominance of those gigantic German car makers, it would be right now while they're all busy steering their ships towards electrification. So with all that in mind, I'd like to introduce you to a brand new car from a fairly new car brand. This is the Genesis GV60, and this is fully charged. Farnborough, Amsterdam, San Diego, Sydney. The world's number one festival of clean energy and electric vehicles is coming to you. Whether it's Fully Charged Live Europe, supported by Mobility Service, or Fully Charged Live UK, supported by LV, we can't wait to see you there. Now, before we get into the car itself, a bit of background on Genesis. Genesis is Hyundai's premium brand. It was founded in 2015. It is to Hyundai what uh, Lexus is to Toyota, what Infiniti is to Nissan. Infiniti, by the way, launched in Europe in about 2009, went terribly wrong, folded about 10 years later. But here's why I think Genesis may be in with a better chance of success. This company is going big on electric. By 2025, every Genesis model will be available as a pure EV. And if you look at the brands that are doing really well right now, Hyundai, Kia, MG, they are the ones that are betting big on electric, that are committing fully while everyone else dawdles. I think there's a very high chance that the big bosses at Hyundai Genesis had a look at the European market, observed that BMW, Audi, Mercedes were slightly taking their time and identified an opportunity to sneak in and make Genesis the premium car you want in this new electric world. And of course, the other thing Genesis has going for it is the fact that its parent company is on fire at the moment. Between the Ioniq 5 and the Kona, Hyundai has two of the pound for pound best EVs on the road to its name right now. The Ioniq 5 for me, best new car of last year. And the good news is that this GV60 shares much of its bits with the Ioniq 5, with the EV6. Same bespoke platform, the eGMP, which means the same big range, the same extremely fast charging, the same generous helping of cabin space. Anyway, we'll get into all that sensible stuff in a minute. First of all, it's a new car. Let's, you know, nose around it a bit. Now, first things first, thoughts on the colour? Sao Paulo lime, in case you're wondering. You uh, wouldn't lose it in a car park, or at night, or from the moon. I think it's quite nice, actually. I'm a big fan of this colour. In terms of the pitching of this car, its relationship to its siblings, the EV6 and the Ionic 5, the EV6 is the sporty one, the Ionic 5 is the boxy, squashy, comfy one, and my understanding is that the Genesis is going to sit just above the pair of them. It's going to be sporty, but luxurious. It's a combination of two, the best of both worlds. We don't know pricing yet, but I expect it's going to be ever so slightly above those two, given that Genesis is Hyundai's premium brand. And actually, my first impression looking around this thing is that for a compact SUV, it's really sporty looking, more so even than the Kia EV6. It's actually 20 centimeters, give or take, shorter than the Kia. So a stubby little thing and just looks so aggressive sitting here, especially on these enormous 21 inch wheels, which are really cool. Now here at the front, we can see two of Genesis's main design cues in action. The first being this two-stripe headlight design. That's very Genesis. You'll see that on all their models. And I really like the way it looks here. The other is this grill shape, which is sort of rounded and then comes to a point at the bottom. Now, obviously, this being a bespoke electric car, it doesn't really need much of a grill. It doesn't really need much cooling. As such, most of this is actually for show and closed off. And it's just this little section down here that uh, ventilates the battery. The other thing I'm noticing now 
that I'm stood next to it is this really lovely front splitter with these two little kind of fangs either side. Very, very cool. Around the side, well, just... Can we just talk about these wheels for a second? 21 inches, this is the biggest you can get on this car. I don't know how many people are gonna spec them, but they look amazing, they're great design, and just give the car such a mean stance. Camera wing mirrors, as standard, you don't see those on the Ionic or the EV6, you get them as standard. On the Genesis, in my experience, these are either brilliant or rubbish, depending on how they are deployed. We'll find out when we have a look inside. Coming along here. Now, what you don't see here is a little camera, but outside of Europe, this car can be spec'd with facial recognition software, which is mounted in the B-pillar here, and you can unlock the car with your face. We don't get that in Europe. Boo, Never mind. This is quite fun. I like this. Not sure what it is, but I like it. It's sort of like one of the designers sneezed at a pivotal moment during the penning of the design and didn't want to tell anyone, but it's kind of cool. I don't know. What do you think? Round the back, nice muscular shoulder on this, not dissimilar to what you get on the EV6. I go to the gym and do shoulder shrugs so that one day I can look like this. Purposeful fixed rear wing. This comes on all the different models. This isn't just for the sporty one. In fact, the bodywork is identical across the different versions of the GV60. It's just different wheels and interior bits that change. And there's that two stripe light design again. Really, really smart looking thing. Very interested to know in the comments, which of the three do you like design wise the best? Very different looking cars, but all really interesting in their own way. There are three versions of the GV60 and they are sort of identified as the long range one, the all wheel drive one and the performance one. The base car, rear wheel drive only, about 160 kilowatts of power, which is the equivalent to a sort of 225 odd brake horsepower and you should be expecting range well up towards 300 miles in that one, real world range. Next we have the all wheel drive model that fits another slightly smaller motor to the front axle for a total of 234 kilowatts watts and then the top end which you see behind me is the performance again all-wheel drive but the same sized motor that you get in the back mounted to the front as well for a total of 320 kilowatts uh, that's the equivalent of 420 odd horsepower it's also got a boost button on the steering wheel which delivers an extra 20 kilowatts of power giving you the full sendage all at once allowing you to do 0 to 62 miles an hour in four seconds that's pretty quick for a family crossover. The other fun thing about this performance version and its boost mode is there's also a secret drift setting inside of that boosty mode. We don't know much about it yet. We're obviously not gonna be able to try it out today in this studio, but this thing has a drift mode. <laughs> this electric family crossover. That is remarkable. I think it possibly may trump Polestar's adjustable suspension for the least utilized feature on an electric car, but it's there if you want it. And one final perk of that eGMP platform, vehicle to load. Much like the Ionic and the Kia, you can fit a three pin plug back here. You can charge another electric car or mow your grass using this thing as a power pack. Well, welcome to the interior of the Genesis GV60. Impressive in a word. But here's the thing, this car shares much of its bits with the EV6 and the Ionic 5. And as such, I recognize certain things. Just the general shape of it in here, the kind of two screen into one screen setup, the uh, sort of floating center console. It's all a bit familiar, but they've genesis it up and definitely made it more premium than the other two. This interior makes me think that this car is going to be a good bit more expensive than the Arnic 5. It just it smells posh in here. I've got lovely materials everywhere I look. I've got this leathery stuff on the door. I've got some suede stuff, lovely texture. This piece on the door has got a little kind of pattern to it, which I can feel with my hand. This little knurled edge to the window switches, the switches which feel like they're made of metal. It feels really high quality in here. I love this little rotary dial for controlling my camera wing mirror, which by the way, looks really good on this big display. It's sort of been plopped on the door, 
slightly clumsily, but most importantly, I can see it clearly. Also a big fan of these funky circular door handles. They're quite nice, but the funkiest thing of all is my gear selector, which when I turn the car off becomes... At least one window is open. A crystal ball. Look at this. This will glow different colors when the car's charging like a mood light. And then when you want to turn the car on, it spins around and you've got this lovely, it's like the kind of dial on an old school rotary phone that I'm using to select my gears here. And it changes color depending on which direction I'm going in. Just a really beautiful piece. A few other things I'm noticing and do keep in mind, I just got in this car for the first time. So these are my on the fly observations. Lovely distribution of physical buttons. Yeah, sexy, I know. Hind Ikea, really good at this stuff. Buttons for the stuff that you want buttons for, but without making it look cluttered, it's still quite clean and tidy in here. This infotainment looks really good to me. I've got a nice physical dial for it, which you know I prefer. Very responsive. It's, I've never used Genesis software before, but I feel quite comfortable with that already ready and it looks really nice too. What else? Boost button and drive mode buttons on the steering wheel. You don't see that in many family crossovers. This boost button, you press that, you get the full whack of power from both motors simultaneously. That's how you get this car from 0 to 60 in four seconds. Drive mode button. Now here's something I've just noticed. If I press this and I change the car from eco to sport, I can feel the bolstering of the seat squeeze me in as the car prepares for some serious driving. That is so cool. What else? What else? We've got a nice wireless phone charger here that's cleverly located. A couple USB-C ports down there which you can use to charge and also to connect the car to Apple CarPlay. Um, oh, this is fun buttons in the passenger seat on the side here that I can use to control the passenger seat. So if your passenger is getting on your nerves on a long drive, they're putting on bad music or just talking too much, you can just say, listen, you are losing your legroom privileges until you become a better passenger, okay? And if they really annoy you, you can fold them up like a panini. A couple of final cool things of note that you can't actually see. Um, one is something called road active noise control. This car does all sorts of clever noise cancelling things to keep it as peaceful and quiet out on the road as possible. Obviously we can't test that today but very excited to experience that when we finally do get to get it out on the road. Should be real peaceful in here. Also three different sound profiles for this electric car. That's quite fun. One called futuristic, one called e-motor and one called g-engine and that last one I believe just plays uh, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, got it. Hello and welcome to the back seat jack test. Here we go. Driver's seat in my position. Yeah, happy, happy with that. EGMP platform. Despite this car being the best part of 20 centimeters shorter than the Kia EV6, you still get so much cabin space because of that bespoke architecture. Final thoughts on the GV60 then. Well, from what I've seen today, big fan. I mean, I knew I was gonna like it because I love the Ionic 5. I love the EV6 and this is from the same family. It's from the same car company. So it wasn't gonna be rubbish. We knew that. I think my big question mark with this car is how is it going to distinguish itself from its siblings? I think the big threat that this thing faces isn't from BMW or Audi, it's from within, because the EV6 and the Ionic are so good. They've set such a high bar that if this thing is gonna cost a bit more than them, it's gonna have to really do some special things in order to justify that. Now, one way it definitely does that already is the quality of the interior. That is a cut above the other two, and I'm hoping the other way it's gonna do that is out on the road in the way it drives. I am hopeful that where the EV6 is good to drive for a big family SUV, this is just going to be downright good to drive. A proper driver's car. It's got, it's got flipping drift mode, for goodness sake. You'd certainly hope so. That remains to be seen. For now, do let me know what you think of this car in the comments. Which do you like the look of the most? Which would you have with your own money? Let me know down below. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.
Well, if you enjoyed that episode, you're going to love this one. And this one, too, is very relevant to the topic. And also, if you want to subscribe to Fully Charged, which is a wonderful thing to do, really helps us, cost you nothing, you just click up there. It's really simple. And if you do want to support us a little bit more, you can have a look at the Patreon link. That's up there. Thank you.